Okay, lecture two, isomerism. This tends to get students, is uh, these isomers. What we're trying to do is create a molecule that has different bonding than, uh, than another molecule, but it has the same formula, same number of carbons, same number of hydrogens. And later on we'll see we add in oxygens and other atoms, but right now we're just dealing with hydrocarbons. Uh, here's some, uh, you should know the definitions of these terms. Now, draw five constitutional isomers with the same chemical formula as heptane. Now, I'm going to draw out the, the condensed form. And the thing is, these are not what, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, lectures that are, have absolutely every bit of information. What these lectures are about is that you, uh, is using the information from the textbook and I talk about most of the information as I go along in the problem but you want to your textbook is a fantastic resource to get the theory and get the idea of what we're going to be doing and then I go through problem after problem I do lots and lots and lots of problems uh, on in these lectures but I do definitely cover the theory as I, I move along but I'm not going to break it up and and go through all of the theory of the isomers. And you want to read that, and now this is the application, the kind of thing that you'll see on the exam. So use that book. Uh, now, the bonding scheme here, we can see that we have um, a methyl, uh, the carbons on the ends are only bonded to one carbon. Each of the carbons in the center here, each of them is bonded to two carbons, all the way down the line. Now, so what we want to do is create a different uh, structure and how I do this is uh, we have seven carbons in a, in a row. I do six. I've left that one hydrogen off for a reason you'll see in a second. Um, and as you learn how to do this, you'll know that you have to do that. If you don't, uh, you'll, you'll come back and have to make that change. If I put a two there, you'd see that we have to change it. But I take one of the carbons off the end and, and shift it over to another carbon, creating a branch. This has no branches, it's a straight chain. This has a methyl group that branches off from the straight chain of six carbons. Notice this carbon, all the carbons have four bonds to it. The bond is either shown or you can tell that it exists because of the hydrogen. Now, if you count the number of carbons, you'll see that there's seven, and the number of hydrogens is 16, just like this guy. But this carbon here is bonded to three other carbons. We don't have to look any further than that because there's no carbon in this one that has that bonding scheme. So this is definitely an isomer. It has the same for formula, different chemical structure, different bonding scheme. So once I've done that and I have that chain, what I do is I move the methyl group down the line and see if I create a different one each time. And I'm just going to be careful. There's seven carbons. I wish I hadn't chosen heptane, but you want uh, the smaller chains don't have as much as many isomers to work with. We want five here. Now notice that we can think of this carbon as being bonded to one uh, an, a methyl group or a uh, one carbon chain, a one carbon chain and then a four carbon chain. This carbon, that's where I move the methyl group, it's a one carbon, two carbon and three carbon chain. So even though this carbon is bonded to three carbons uh, like this one is, uh, each of these carbons then goes on to do something different than up here. It's a one carbon, one carbon, four carbons, one carbon, two carbon, three carbons. Different structure, so it is an isomer. So these are both isomers so far. Now let's do this one. Let's move the methyl group down the line. And this, the reason I do it this way is because then uh, you don't miss anything as you go. If you if you follow this rule and just st and we're just sticking with uh, um, alkanes. Uh, you'll, you'll catch everybody. Now look at this guy. Uh, this carbon has a methyl group here and it looks like it's something different but notice that it's a carbon bonded to one carbon to two carbons and a, a three carbon chain just like this guy. All this molecule is is the uh, is if we took this molecule and flipped it it would look just like this one except you know when you flip it the carbons are backwards but remember the carbons only represent atoms. Atoms are perfectly spherical so if you took this and flipped it you'd have the same exact structure. So you should also get used to that, that molecules that look completely different from each other, or look different from each other, are actually the same thing. So think of the bonding here. This carbon is, has a one carbon chain, two carbon chain, and three carbon chain attached to it. This has a one, two, and a three carbon chain attached to it. So we can't use this one. 
it's the same one. This is what gets most of the students. They create the same molecule over and over, and uh, uh, and then I have to just mark. I look at it and say, no, nope, that's wrong. Uh, that's that's a copy. That's a copy. I've had students who have made up different molecules or seemingly different molecules. I ask for five of them, and they write the same five, but they just they'll. Uh, one of the things they'll do is they'll change the confirmation, which is something we're going to talk about. So they take this. Very common. I'm not making fun of the students, trying to point out what they, they do. Uh, this, they'll look at this, they'll say, well, let's put the methyl group on the end, you know, move a methyl group over here, but notice this is the same chain. It's just kinked. This is not a kink in the chain. This is an actual new branching because it's, it's changed the bonding scheme. But this is just one, two, three, four, five, six carbons with the methyl group on one, two, three. Same thing, it's, it's the same, these are equal, these are equal. So we can't use that one. So you gotta be careful. That's what really gets the students. So um, now, since if I move the methyl group over to here, it's gonna be the same as this one above, uh, this one here. And if I move the methyl group over to this one, it's just extending the chain, we now go to five carbons. Now, when we go to a five carbon chain, that means that we need to put two more carbons on, so we have two branches here. Count them up. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven carbons. Three, six, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Let's see. One, two, one, three. Oh, this should be a thing. Yeah, <laughs> I was gonna say fifteen car. I only had fifteen hydrogens. There's the sixteenth uh, uh, on the end that has to be CH three. So I'm glad I did that. Threw me off a little bit. I do these problems. I, I make them up, but I don't really solve them uh, normally until I start doing them. So there'll be a little, a few little blips. Any big mistakes, I just redo the video. So anything like that, it's a little embarrassing for me, but it's things that happen to students, and it's, it's good to see. So I went back and double-checked the number of carbons and hydrogens. I was missing one of the hydrogens, and it was because of I had this as CH2 rather than CH3. So all this kind of stuff happens. Always go back and double-check your work. So we have three so far. We need five. So it's looking. So what we do is leave one of the methyl groups alone and move the other one over and you can see that or you should be able to see that there is a definite difference here the methyl groups are next to each other now they're separated they're not part of a they're not extending the chain the chain is five they were just moving these along so now we have our fourth but you can see uh, if we move the methyl this methyl group here we've extended the chain that's just a six member chain with a methyl group at carbon two we already have that if we move this one over, then it becomes this molecule, so we can't do that. Uh, so we could go to four carbons, but what I normally like to do then is, is uh, well, actually, yeah. No, we'll stick with five, and this carbon can certainly handle one more carbon attached to it. So that's what I do. And now this carbon has four carbons attached to it. That doesn't occur anywhere else in any of our other molecules, so this is definitely an isomer, a new isomer I should say, and check the bonding and then you can count them up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 3, 6, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, this is a new one, 5. On the exam I, I tend to make it a little easier, you know, there, there, I make sure that there's a lot of isomers to choose from. We were really running out here, <laughs> but uh, that's nice. Um, uh, here's some more practice. Draw all of the uh, constitutional isomers with the same formula as butane and for pentane. This is easy to do. That's why I gave two of them. Here's our... I don't know why I'm drawing the expanded form. I, I really hate to do that unless I have to. Sometimes you have to do it for the uh, for reactions, but otherwise it should be the condensed form like this. Now, um, so if we have four carbons for butane, Again, you got to know these names. You have to know them right off the top of your head. I'm going to be using them in these lectures as if you know them and you should know them. Uh, we can we can't put the methyl group on the end because that just extends the chain, and we'd be back back to this molecule. We have this, and so we have three carbons, and then one meth methyl group we put on the center. Well, that methyl group cannot go anywhere else without just extending the chain. 
And if you, I, I'm not going to go any further with it. This is the only isomer of the butane. So butane, you have your butane or n-butane they call it, and this is the one isomer of it that has that's a hydrocarbon, uh, unsaturated hydrocarbon. And uh, try it. See if you can. Uh, what I would do is, if you don't believe me, and there's no reason that you have to believe me because you can prove it to yourself. I'm not going to go any further because I know there's nothing else to be done here. Try it, though. Uh, mix, mix and match, but look back. No matter how zig you want to say, well, maybe we do this. There we go. That's new. There's two methyl groups, but, but look at what you get. If you, it looks like there's two carbons and you got a methyl group on each, but no, it's, it's, it's a zigzagged, uh, kinked, a butane. It's just all you've done is make move this methyl group, which is they're free to do. These molecules are very bendy. You just bent the molecule into kind of a horseshoe shape. You haven't created a new molecule. You haven't created any new bonding scheme. Now let's look at pentane. Because it has one more carbon, it should have more isomers. I don't know how many more. I think it, there's actually a list in your book somewhere. Uh, uh, on page uh, th uh, 327 in this book, and it says that there are three different forms. Well, that's the first one, so let's go try the second one, or try to find a second one. There we go. That's another one. And then if you move the methyl group over, you see that's just a reflection of this one, so that's when I go to three carbons. And the only one that will work is if they're across from each other. So this is um, C5H12. So we have one, two, three, four, five carbons. Make sure I'm on the page. And uh, 12. I've been doing a lot of these for other classes, and, and uh, I'm getting very good at not writing below the line of sight. <laughs> but if I do, and I, I keep talking, uh, if I completely forget, I just redo the video. So know that eventually I will move it up, and usually with a an apology. Okay, so the, that's you should be able to find the isomers of several different uh, any any formula that I give you. You should be able to come up with a different bonding scheme, and you just have to keep in mind what are you doing. You're breaking. If you have to break bonds to create the molecule, then it's a new one. If there's no molecule that you've drawn that can be bent into that shape. Uh, you have to break bonds and it's a new one. Okay, draw eight different conformations for octane using skeletal structural formulas. Now this is different than isomers. We're not going to break any bonds. We just know that the bonds are flexible. So we're going to show uh, eight different conformations. There are an infinite number. Every time the carbon moves by a fraction of a degree, uh, it bends in any way. That's a new con uh, uh, conformer or a conformation. So we just start out, we can just do this. And I said I wanted you to use skeletal, because imagine even condensed forms for octane would be a kind of a, a monster. And I wanted uh, you to use the skeletal structures um, just so you can see that you can, you know, how they're used, and also save us some time. And then it's just a matter of you know, bend them any way you want here, as long as they're different than the ones that came before. So this is pretty easy, as long as, I mean, I mean, this one would be considered different. You don't normally, a lot of times with the skeleton structures, they want you to, to stay in 90 degrees, but there's no reason that you have to. You can certainly make any kind of goofy one that you want. You don't have to stick with anything in particular. These molecules are very flexible. So when they're floating around uh, in solvent or, or in the air, if they're gas, uh, they're free to, or vapor, they're free to uh, rotate in any way that their bonds will allow them to do that, don't change the bonding scheme. It's a chain. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. A lot of times when I give the students this flexibility, then they do something like this. I guess they get a little too freewheeling. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And they do that, that's wrong. By changing it into a ring or by branching it out, you've changed the structure. Confirmation is just the same molecule and it's just. It's just uh, rotating. The bonds are the atoms are rotating around the bonds, and these big molecules, these long molecules, are very floppy and uh, and can uh, achieve all kinds of different conformations. So we have one, two, three, four, five. Now I'm just getting kind of bored with why did I say eight? But I guess <laughs> oh, well, let's do it like a staircase one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 
Uh, I can I can try to draw the first letter of my name. <laughs> but just to show you that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One more to do. Just do something like this. Don't think I've drawn quite this one before. Yeah, it looks a little different. So you where you have an infinite number of them, just make them uh, as different from each other as you can. Uh, you know, if you have a sense of whimsy, do do whatever you want to do here. But you can't break any bonds, and you can't form them into rings. You can't branch them out. Whatever I give you. Uh, and also, if I ask you to use skeletal structural formulas, that's what I want you to use. If I say you can't use them, you can't use them. So make sure you know how to work with all of these different types of structural formulas.